the idea was that it's not a smarter search engine, which was really all that was going on back in those days. It was the thing that comes after. Like if you could ask a search engine to not just find something for you, but to do something for you, that's a big leap. And of course, adding the conversational interface to it um, was just a natural way to go. And it's something that everybody will, can look at one time and figure out how it works, uh, which is important. And ultimately, we prototyped it. And we recruited a few key people and went, and, uh, went on Sand Hill Road and raised some money and got things kicked off. So that was about a, from the time I left here to the time we funded it was about seven months. So I, I got a call from somebody saying uh, that somebody else in Apple wanted to talk and it was actually him that called. So the funny thing was that when I answered the phone, I was trying to answer it, the little swipe thing just wouldn't go. You ever have that happen? <laughs> <laughs> it took, it was like on the eighth one when you're that playing I finally Angry Birds or opening the phone? Huh? Playing Angry Birds at the time or <laughs> no. trying to open your phone? <laughs> Oh, this is 2010. Right. So, before then. Okay. Um, so what's that call like? Um, I don't get too nervous in situations like that. He was very nice, actually. It was, of course, I couldn't believe that it was him, but I could hear that it was him. I, I could tell it wasn't a joke. Uh, he just said, you know, we, we love what you're doing, and can you come over to my house tomorrow? I said, no, I'm sorry, I'm busy, but... <laughs> <laughs> Actually, I was taking my wife to the ballet the next night, and I told him that in, in the afternoon. He's like, oh, that's great. Well, well, we'll arrange for something a little bit earlier then. And he said, I'll call you back. We'll find a time. And I was, of course, expecting you know, uh, an admin to call. But he called me back an hour later and said, how about this time? And he gave me directions to his house. And yeah, he was very personable. Um, and he, he treated us with respect you know, from that point on, really. I mean, he's got a. I think he has a weak spot in his heart for entrepreneurs, and through many of the times that we've talked through some difficult issues, he would refer to, you know, he remembers when it was him and so on. A lot of the initiatives that are happening, uh, you know, 1871, and is starting to get a geographic central uh, point for entrepreneurialism and to go into certain areas of the city and see, you know, entrepreneurs pitching to venture capitalists and. The number one issue that I see is just uh, we need more really hardcore engineers uh, up here, uh, which ties into you know getting more uh, a closer relationship with the University of Illinois. I think Northwestern's got a uh, you know small engineering program, but the the big difference is that in Silicon Valley, Stanford is the engine to everything that happens there, and Chicago needs some equivalent to that to really get going, especially in the tech side. And there, there's a lot of uh, startups here that are not related to tech as much, uh, although I, it's my contention that in 10 or 20 years, every industry has to be knee deep in tech, regardless of what it is. But there's manufacturing and, and retail and, and other uh, large entities here. Uh, but I think, generally speaking, uh, we need more engineers to take the ideas that are coming up in the community here and be able to build them. Well, I'm enjoying a little time off. I've I had four years of really long, hard uh, stretch where you know, I'm reacquainting to the kids. I'm getting my golf handicap down a little bit. I'm uh, waiting for my non-compete to expire. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> and I'll, I'll be back in the game at some point. Great. So I have lots of ideas about things, but uh, Nothing specific at this point. Back in the game here in Chicago, I assume. Um, I'm here for good.